Hey everyone, Ariel Adams here with the blog to watch. Please subscribe to our videos on YouTube and like this video if you find it useful. This is a review of the Patek Philippe Nautilus 5711. The specific model is the 5711-1A, or I'm sorry, 5711-1A-010. This is the most famous of the currently available models because it has the blue gradient dial as well as the stainless steel case. This is easily one of the most difficult to get modern luxury sport watches around and possibly for good reason. So let's just take a little bit of a, uh, of a history break here. Patek Philippe introduced this watch designed by Gerald Genta in the 1970s and over the years Patek Philippe has made little modifications to it made it bigger, made it smaller, added complications, changed the movements, changed the dials, all kinds of things like that. The 5711 is very true in a lot of ways to the original with um, a lot of the features, the size, case size is 40 millimeters wide, it's about uh, 10 millimeters thick I believe, or I'm sorry, 8.3 millimeters thick, very very thin case. What is so good about this watch? Why are so many people excited constantly about the Nautilus 5711 and why does it in many instances go for double retail even when sold at a pre-owned price? Well, let's put the watch on for a moment and let's just see what it looks like. In a lot of circles this is considered the most desirable, uh, I'll call it lifestyle sports watch. It's water resistant to 120 meters and yeah you can go swimming with it no problem. It was designed for that. One of the things that makes this watch so desirable, in my opinion, and great, is that it's comfortable and very thin. You can see the profile right there is so slim that you could easily wear it um, with a suit, but as a sport watch, it definitely has a lot of appeal. In the 1970s, it was very exciting to release expensive sport watches in steel. Audemars Piguet um, did it first with the Royal Oak, which they used to laugh or make a joke that it was, actually, it might have been in some advertising material, that it was a steel watch at a gold watch price. In my opinion, the mastery of this watch is really in the design of the bracelet. Gerald Genta was, in my opinion, probably best as a bracelet designer, more so than a dial designer. If anything, the dials are simple, and I think in a lot of ways that's what's allowed them to endure, is that the dials are simple, easy to read, no nonsense, and follow all the rules of proportions, legibility, dot, you know, contrast, um, proper materials and things like that. So it's not that it's an amazing dial, it's that it's a very useful dial on a cool case and a lovely bracelet. Patek Philippe produces this watch similar to the, how, how someone would produce jewelry. There's so many steps involved in producing the bracelet from all the polishing to all the different pieces that need to be made. And it's very nicely made. It's actually quite thin and light and a lot of people are actually surprised as to how um, I'll call it dainty, um, the Patek Philippe Nautilus feels compared to even something like the Rolex Submariner that uh, is in the same size class even though it's, uh, it's a little beefier in certain ways. The movement is gorgeous, very nice finishing visible through the sapphire crystal display case back. This is a very modern movement, it's pretty accurate, nice solid gold automatic rotor there. I talk more about the movement in the review but I just wanted to show you that it's visible there and more or less what it looks like. When you take this watch off and you hand it to people, uh, showing them the movement side first is a great way to sort of impress them. This watch has a retail price of almost $25,000. That is a lot of money for a steel watch. And a common question is, is it worth it? Well, that really depends on a lot of things. Is this inherently a $25,000 watch? Well, Patek Philippe doesn't make a lot of them. And the jewelry qualities of the watch as well as the orological qualities, meaning the movement, combine to make something that is more expensive or more valuable than just a complicated case or just a complicated movement. You have a combination of things here. Is this an expensive watch? Yes. Is it overpriced? Well, no, because people are literally willing to wait and pay above retail. So in a sense, if you're able to get this watch at the $24,840 um, US retail price, you should consider yourself quite lucky. One of the complaints I have about this watch is that in a lot of ways the construction was kind of stuck in the 70s. This is a retro sports watch by design and theme and of course they didn't want to change too much about what Gerald Genta and Patek Philippe got right in the 1970s. 
but it doesn't feel like a modern watch. So if you're looking for a new watch that's built like a very good watch, this sort of feels like the very best of what they could do at the tail end of the mechanical watch era before quartz timepieces cannibalize the industry. In a lot of ways, that's exactly what this is. It's not that Patek Philippe ever went away, but they certainly made quartz. Um, now they don't make quartz men's watches at all, but they still do for women. So again, this is the Patek Philippe Nautilus 5711 slash 1A-1. 010 with the blue dial and steel. Retail price is $24,840. A truly interesting timepiece, and I feel very fortunate to have had time with it. You can see the full review on the blog to watch. Thanks.